Hello and welcome to this TechnicForce tutorial. In this video we're going to discuss how to create a membership funnel in CloudFunnels. Membership funnels allow you to create password protected web pages to contain video tutorials or product download pages. To get started, click on the Funnels and Sites module in the sidebar. Here you'll see a list of your various funnels and sites including your membership funnels or we can create new. First, we'll give our funnel a name. We'll call this one Gold VIP. Then select the funnel type, in this case, Membership. The funnel URL is assigned automatically based on the funnel name, but we can change the path of this if we want. Only the end path, not the base URL. We can check the box if we're overriding a funnel that already exists, and then Create. And CloudFunnels automatically builds a membership funnel structure for us to fill in. You see that this funnel includes a registration page, a login page, a membership page, and a forgot password page. If we'd like to add any extra pages, we can just click New Page, for example, Tutorials, and then Add. Next, starting with the first page in our funnel, we need to design web pages for them or choose from our template catalog. We'll just choose one from the templates for now. And I'll repeat this process for each of these other pages and I'll be back in just a moment. Now I've chosen templates for all these other pages, but this is the page that we created from new page. And CloudFunnels doesn't recognize what type of page this is. So before we can change the template, we'll just go into page settings and we'll instruct CloudFunnels that the page category for our tutorials page is going to be a membership page, and then save settings. Now when we go to change the template, CloudFunnels recognizes that this is a membership category page and it knows which templates to offer. So we'll go ahead and choose one of the training templates here. Now that we've added a design to each of our pages, we can actually drag and reorder these pages as necessary. So we want to make sure that this tutorial is within the login to make sure that it's password protected. If it was outside of the logins, then anyone would be able to access that URL without entering a password. Next, let's go to our registration page. We'll take a look at the page settings. An important feature of the registration page is verified. If you want this registration page to be open to the public and anyone can register, then you can leave verified registration page off. However, if you only want select people to be able to access the registration page, such as customers, then you can turn this slider on to make the registration page verified only, and then saving your settings. By doing that, anyone who visits this URL without the special sign-up code, when they input their information and attempt to register, they'll receive the error unable to authorize the URL because this is now a verified registration page. In order to authorize the URL for this registration page, the user has to use our verified registration URL. And that is received here in the page setup by clicking this icon here, Copy Verified Membership Link. And now, instead of directing visitors to gold-vip slash registration page, this verified link looks like this. Now this actual URL path will not bring the member to a valid registration page, but you can use it within the Compose Mail or Sequences modules to send an email invitation to this customer and it will decode with a special invitation link. So let's take a look at that. We'll go to Compose Mail And we'll paste our invitation link here. And we'll just call this Reg Page Test. And we'll use that same title for the email subject. And for the email, we'll just use our admin email. And we'll select a mailer for this one. We'll use our default. And then send this mail. Now we'll go to our inbox, 
and we'll see here a new email called RegPageTest. And when we open this, we'll see that the code that we used here, so instead of an at symbol with CF varied seven member, instead this decoded to an invite code, a very specific invite code, which can be used only once. So now when we click on this link, when the registration page loads, we'll be able to add our user information but this time, because we arrived on an invite code, we'll be able to sign up. And we're successfully brought to the login page. So here we can enter our email and credentials and log in. So before we proceed, let's go back to the registration page and we'll take a closer look at some of the details of the page. We'll open it in the page editor. Here we can see a very interesting code called validation error in curly brackets. This short code is used by CloudFunnels to manage all of your various validation errors within CloudFunnels. To find all those, go to the Settings tab in the sidebar and go to the Setup Membership Error Texts tab. And here you can find membership error texts for all different situations. You can customize these however you want, but depending on the situation, this validation error code will recall the appropriate error at the appropriate instance. Now let's take a look at inputs. Here we can see that the user is asked for their full name, and this is a username. And if we look in the component settings, this will be categorized as a name input. So let's go back to Cloud Funnels, and we'll go back to our funnel. And here on the registration page, we can take a look at the page setup. So we can see the valid input names for this project are first name, last name, name, which was being used on the registration page for the username, email, password, re-enter password, and remember user. These are all valid for the whole project. Valid input names for this page are the same. If we want to collect a bit more information on the user and categorize it into its proper fields, we could add extra valid input names. So for example, we might put address street and we'll keep that connected with an underscore and then we might add address town address state and address zip now when we save our settings these page names will be automatically added to the project input names as well. Now we're free to create data collection fields on our registration page for all of these different fields to collect information on the customer. Using this method, the data will be properly categorized into their appropriate fields, which we can then recall later for more personalized emails to the customer and other specific targeting. Let's go back to the page editor to see how that works. So here with an email, we can just take a quick peek at this one. Under the component settings, we can see that this field is being saved as the email field. So let's take this whole box with the title and the input field, and we'll select that larger box, and let's duplicate that. And so now we have email input, and we can see this is an exact duplicate with the input going to the email name. Let's change this one to address street. And we'll change the title of this one to street address. And here we should also change the placeholder. So under the component settings, we'll change the placeholder from an example email to 123 Main Street. And we don't actually require this, so we can uncheck the required box. Now we can do the same thing again. We'll select this box and we'll duplicate it. And this time we'll change the title to town. And here we will change the input to address town. And we'll change the placeholder to 
Anyville. And you can repeat this process as much as you want. And by doing that, you'll receive much more specific information about your customer that will allow you to provide a much more personalized experience for them later on. It's a good idea, though, that anytime you have fields that are not required and other fields that are, that you make it known to the customer. So, for example, we might want to adjust this one to call this required. And we'll do the same thing for email. When you're done with all of your different setups, be sure to click Save Template. Next, let's go back to our funnel and let's take a look at the login page. We'll open this in the page editor and we'll see the validation error shortcode is used here on the login page as well. And again, this would be for incorrect passwords or any other validation errors that would match the settings in Cloud Funnels. And we'll come back to membership and tutorials pages in just a moment. Let's jump ahead to the forgot password page and we'll open this in the page editor. And again, here we'll see the validation error shortcode being used. And for any validation errors that occur here on the forgot password page, they will all be rendered here. Now the forgot password page is a rather special page because the various steps of reclaiming your password happen in stages. So the first step is encapsulated here in the insert email operator. So it starts with curly brackets insert email and it closes with curly brackets slash insert email. And everything within these two sets of brackets here is the first stage of reclaiming the ID where the user has to enter their email ID and send the reset link. The next step is encapsulated between curly brackets confirmation message and curly brackets slash confirmation message. And Cloud Funnels will display this text here. The last step of the forgot password process is encapsulated between these curly brackets here, update password, and these curly brackets here, slash update password. And that's where the user can enter their new password, confirm, and then update the password. You can feel free to update the forgot password page with various logos or change the text if you wish, but be sure to keep the basic operators intact so that the page functions as intended. Next, let's go back to Cloud Funnels and let's take a look at the membership page. So we'll open this in the page editor. And here we can see the members product page. So we can change the header and we can change the logos and things like that. And we're going to want to insert some hyperlinks here on the various links in the sidebar. So for example, because we have a tutorials page, we want to be sure that this link block will link to it. So let's select this link block and then go to the component settings and head back to Cloud Funnels to the Tutorials page and Page Setup. And here, let's copy the Tutorials page URL to our clipboard, head back to the Page Editor, and here in the Component Settings, we'll replace this hashtag with the Tutorials URL. And we can do that with all of the links here in the sidebar as well. Now notice here at the bottom, we have a Logout button. And this is also highlighted with a link block. So let's select this link block here and go back to component settings. And we'll see that this link block here actually requires a bit of attention. Some of the special characters have been replaced. These characters here should be actually a closed curly bracket. And same thing in the front here, these three characters should be a closed curly bracket. Now this is the logout URL code. Let's go back to Cloud Funnels and we'll open the help page in a new tab for reference. Here we have a section for templating with membership details. And at the bottom, there's a section about logouts. You have the ability to use this short code here, logout URL, to automatically hyperlink to the logout URL of that funnel. This will basically log the client out of the membership and bring them back to the login page. You also have another shortcode here called logout link. By using this shortcode, what it actually does is it creates 
a hyperlink of the word logout that you can just use to click on. Let's copy these two lines, head back to our page editor, and let's add a block of text here. We'll add a single column here, and then we'll add a text box inside, and we will paste that as plain text. And it's important to paste this as plain text because sometimes if we just copy and paste, it may actually import code from the previous page like bold or underlines that will interfere with CloudFunnels rendering. So let's go ahead and save our template. Now let's go back to our browser and refresh our page. And we can see here that the logout URL and just to remind you, this was the curly brackets logout underscore URL. It actually rendered the full URL, whereas the logout link rendered this logout link right here that is hyperlinked to this URL. And because here in the sidebar under the logout link, we added the hyperlink for the curly brackets logout URL, our logout link down here in the bottom will log us out and bring us back to the login page. So let's log back in and let's just test our training link here to make sure that this brings us to our tutorials page. And you can see that that brings us to the next page in our funnel for the tutorials. Within CloudFunnels, you can manage your various members by clicking here the Members module in the sidebar. And this opens a page that shows all of your membership funnels along with the total number of members in each funnel. Here you have the options to view your members, which you can also access by simply clicking on the total members number, or you can edit the funnel or delete it. So let's view the members. We can either click this icon under the Actions or we can click this number here. And here we'll see a list of all the members of this membership funnel. And we'll just scroll across to see the various inputs that we can collect on these members. And under the actions, we'll see that we can either edit the data for this member or delete the membership. So let's edit the data just to see. And here we can adjust their name and email and password, registration date, registration IP, and we can also edit the extra fields if we've collected any. So that's basically how to create and manage a membership funnel in CloudFunnels. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks very much for watching.